God. That was fast. I love the Lord in that. He's good, isn't he? Yes, Mercy is everlasting and His truth does what? All generations. Yes, amen. Sir. That means there's not going to be one generation that the truth's not going to be preached somewhere. Yes, amen. Sometimes you got to look. Yes. Hey, amen. One scripture said it, it's it's like a man who dug deep. Yes. Found a rock. Yes. Then he laid his foundation. Yes, sir. There's a lot of things. Uh, you don't know a little bit about me. I was raised holiness. Yes. I don't like. I don't think some of you older folks know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Some of you younger folks probably don't. Wholeness is, is really a way of life. Yes, sir. That's how my dad was when I was a kid. It was like in boot camp. Up until I was about 16. When I got a car and a way of going, I got and went. Yeah. Oh, bless you. But I can remember a lot of things that happened. And the reason I'm saying all this is because things, times change, doesn't it? Yes, things sir. change, styles yes. change. You know, they say you keep your clothes long enough, they'll come back in style. Yes, sir. And I've seen that happen about two or three different times. Yes, sir. So I'm not a spring chicken anymore. <laughs> but anyway, I, I've seen a lot of things. I hear a lot of things preached. I hear a lot of people talk about things. And, yes. and it seems the more they talk and the more folks preach, the further and further away from the truth they get. Yes. Yes, We're living in that day. Yes, sir. Jesus said one of the, the main signs of the end would be deceivers. Yes. Take heed that ye be not deceived. Not deceived. Yes. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. I am Christ. Right. Now look at that statement. What right. does Christ mean? The anointed one. Yes, sir. That's talking about false anointing. Yes, sir. And I've seen all kinds. Yes, sir. I remember when I was a kid one time. My dad, he, he's been a good, good minister. He's, yes. he's 81 now. He's getting getting on up years, and I kind of see I can take care of him. But as a child, I watched him act in different ways and services. When one of them guys would, he would try to take over. You ever had that happen? Oh yeah. And if you're not careful, they will. Because they're after something. Yes. And it's called the sheep. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. I don't want nobody to get me. Because if I get a hold of Jesus just right, the scripture yeah. says, and no man can pluck them out of my hand. Yes, sir. Amen. How many wants to get in that place? Yes, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I just felt the Holy Ghost just yes. Somebody lift your hands and praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. But God's going to take care of His own. Amen. We gotta keep our eyes open. Yes, sir. So I remember when I was a kid. I remember uh, one memory is very, very vivid I had as a child. Uh, I was probably I'm gonna say five, six, maybe seven years old, six years old. I was pretty, pretty small. I'd sit in the uh, bench or in the chair. We'd go to a lot of home prayer meetings. Uh, and some of you know what I'm talking about there. We go to home prayer meetings. My yes, dad, he, he, he's kind of like a traveling pastor. He had several places he'd go, and he always wanted Brother Jerry to come. Yes. You know, he just had that kind of anointing, had that charisma, and the Holy Ghost involved, people would get healed. And man, I'm telling you what, I've seen services where folks would, when they fell out, they got up different. Yes, sir. I see folks now fall out, they don't change. Yeah. Something's wrong. Yeah. If this doesn't change you, if the Holy Ghost don't change you, there's something wrong with you. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's kind of a strange message to preach tonight, but I'm going to go with it. I feel like the Lord wants it. But anyway, I seen, uh, I was a child, I sat there, and I remember there's an old stove in the middle of the room. There's a brother, his name's old brother Weaver. He had a place out in Ball Play, had a house out there, some land, and he had converted a big room. He had took the walls out and made a big room and had a old heater in one end of it. He had stoke it up with, with firewood and it'd get warm and cozy in the winter back there. And I'd get back there and I'd sit and had a big old chair and I could sit in it and I could watch them older folks just have that. Yes. Oh, yeah. you know, I heard one fellow say he wouldn't raise like I was and he told one of my elders, he said, I didn't know religion was a full contact sport. <laughs> Laying hands on folks and rolling around in the floor and carrying on, hollering, all that stuff. And, amen. Folks getting up saved. Yes, amen. amen. Living right the next yes, day. Sir. Next year living right. Yes, amen. Sir. A lot of them, I mean, going to heaven, living right. Oh, yeah. And it's hard to find nowadays. Yes, amen. I just love to be, I'd love to go back to an old fashioned, holy rolling meeting. Yes, amen. That's something this age knows nothing about. But I got a feeling. 
before this thing is over, the power of God is going to fall. Amen. And we're going to see us. We're going to walk the benches again. If you know what I mean. Praise God. Somebody lift your hand and pray. Hallelujah. So I sat back there and his little boy is a little older than me. He's probably, I guess he's probably three or four years older than me. He was always one to cut up. You know, he never, he's always mean. You know, that means there's no one like that. It's always mean. Always the end of something. I remember I was a kid back there and they got him up there praying for him. His mom was standing there beside him. He went to holler, jumping up and down the screen. I'm a kid and I'm sitting there. And that's kind of one of my buddies up there. And I'm just seeing what's happening. He's a jumping up and down and carrying on and just a squealing and a holler. Next thing you know, he's laying in the floor. Had his feet up. I don't know if y'all remember the little Abner boots is what I call it. Y'all remember the comic strip little Abner? Yeah. Them funny little boots that was laced about just up above the ankle. That's what he had on. And they had white soles. And I remember the little people down there and they'd just be doing just like that. Just a shaking and he's just a kicking and carrying on the heart. And about that time, amen, Holy Ghost BBs rolled out of his pockets. <laughs> and his mother went to chasing BBs. I was a little kid. I said, oh, we were just alive and we had the biggest time. I've seen all kinds of things. Yes. But I realized something after later on in years, there was something wrong with that boy. Yeah. Because I found out later on, his life went on, I knew him on and off, we'd be friends and we'd see one another from time to time, but never had a real connection. It was always kind of different. And, and I thank God for it. Yes. Because there's all kind of spirits that's gone out into the world. Yes, yes, and I'm going to tell you something. You really got to stay a hold to the Lord in this last day. Yes. Because yes. these things are so powerful and they're so deceptive. Yes. Amen. They'll deceive the very elect if that were possible. Yes. That's what Jesus said. Yes. Well, how many wants to stay a hold to the live wire? Yes. <laughs> we in that day. Yes, sir. Well, it, it time rolled on and that, that, that boy became... He became involved in homosexuality. Went on into uh, other things in life and, and still claims to be a preacher. Now what about that? Now we're living in a day now we see what this president's done and all these things are coming to pass and how they, they put the rainbow colors on the White House and all this stuff. Would you have ever thought we would have been faced with something like that? I never thought. As a child being raised, I never thought we'd have a a telephone that you could look at somebody and talk to them and see them at the same time. I never dreamed that. I remember they talked about it and I'd look at the old black phone sitting over on the, the, the table and I said, how are you going to get a TV or stuck to that thing? <laughs> well, now we got one in our pocket. See, the scripture said in the last days knowledge shall be increased. Yes, That's natural knowledge. Yes. Man, these guys, these guys are smart. Yes. We're talking about uh, people who have... Uh, that, that intelligence, they say, I was reading some uh, literature, and they say intelligence actually doubled. Now, at that time, and that was probably, I'm going to say that's 10, 12 years ago, and the rate was doubling every 10 years. Yes. Now it's picked up pace, and it's actually doubling every five or six years. Yes. That's the intelligence of man's ability and technology. Yes. So, the Bible is right. Yes, sir. In the last days, knowledge shall be increased. How many say, we're there? Amen. It's not coming. We're there. Amen. So I thought about these things. I remember other things. I remember my dad began to... to is this okay if I just tell some of these memories? I was... Uh, I remember when I was a kid, and my dad passed the church on South 11th Street. Anybody y'all know there's a little church over there. It's not there anymore. The, the highway took it. But before they put that highway up, there was a little building there, and it was, I, I, I done forgot the, the name of the little church. My dad, he went by there one time, and they just adopted him as their pastor. So we went there for four or five years, and I remember the anointing. And that's what I'm talking about when I say the anointing. Yes, sir. Yes. It would get so strong, Brother Matt, yes, sir. that there would a cloud, there would be a mist come in the building. Yes, sir. I remember a little old kid, I remember I was five years old specifically because that's when I had my birthday. And they got me in front of everybody. So I remember my fifth birthday. And that's when we was about that time we was going to that church and I seen all these things. Yes. And I seen people who come up, I seen uh, when the anointing would come in and people would begin to speak in tongues and then there'd be somebody, everybody would be quiet and then there'd be somebody would start speaking in tongues in a forceful nature. 
And I'm telling you something, even the little children, the babies, would stop crying. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I witnessed that. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes, because there's something that has been that God's going to bring back for a season. Amen. That God's going to prove Himself that He is what He is. God is a spirit and He seeketh such to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Somebody lift your hands and pray it. Because that's where the church is headed. The real church. Yes, spirit and truth. Yes, takes two things. Yes. Amen. Yes. Word and spirit. Yes, sir. Took two things when Jesus was baptized, right? It was the Word made flesh, right? Yes. Didn't do one thing until something happened when He was baptized. Yes, sir. The Spirit and the Word became one and miracles started happening. Yes, sir. Let me leave you and say, do it again, Lord. Yes. So we're in that day. And I believe, you know, I've, I've seen all these things. And I, I've, I've said, I've questioned God. Anybody here question God? Yes, sir. Oh, don't do that. I don't know how you're going to find anything out unless you ask a question. Right. Now, I know there's a way to approach God. You just don't run up there with a big old fish. Oh, you're going to answer me, God. Don't work like Him. No. You, just, you just come before the Lord in prayer and just ask Him. Right. He's not going to throw you away. So I'm, I, I get and I ask God, so Lord, what's going on? I'm, I'd really like to know because I, I just haven't been in those kind of meetings in a long time. I hadn't been around them kind of people in a long time. And it, see, and it seems as though even the people I do get around, they're like that. It just don't move that way anymore. Come right. on. Am I by myself here? <laughs> or does anybody else see it like that? It's just kind of, it's, it's a love. Yes. Doesn't it seem like it? So I'm sitting and I'm praying and I'm wondering, Lord, what, what's going on? And I really do. That's just my heart, Lord. I'd like to know. Because I want to be ready. Yes, sir. For the hour you think not, yes. your Lord does come. Yes. Right. But now if we're saved, it ought not jump up on us and catch us. No, that's right. I let that sink a minute. Now if we're really saved, yeah. Right. We should be preparing for it. Right. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Like, oh, there's the Lord. You won't be like that. You'll be, there He is. Yes. Right. Like company, you're expecting company in the doorbell room. Do you know who it is? Yes, sir. Amen. Did you ever surprise somebody? Yes. <laughs> I surprise some of my kids, though. You show up sometimes. Oh, there He is. And all that stuff. Yes. Not me to them anymore. I say, oh, there He is. <laughs> <laughs> All kind of reactions. <laughs> hey, they ain't no perfect family, folks. You forget. You think you got a perfect family, just look hard enough. That's right. We're all in the same boat. Yes, sir. We're trying to get out of here. Yes, sir. So I remember a lot of things happened. I remember I started a young, young minister and, and going to church and uh, having children and, and carrying the church and keeping them in church. And I think I have. I thank God for it. One of the last two boys of their generation that knows how to say yes, sir, and no, sir, and yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Right. You ever notice that? Yes. There's a total lack of respect. Yes, sir. I got people. I, I meet people on jobs and do things. And I meet people, uh, young men and even women, 20 years old, and they'll call me by my first name. Yeah. You know, I just want to reach out and grab by the neck and say, "Hey, I'm Mr. Chapman." You, yeah. <laughs> Brother Chapman, you call me something. Yes. Just don't call me my, my first name. Right. It's disrespect. Yes, yes, amen. Say amen, preacher. You're right. Yes. right. Amen. And it deserves respect. Yes, sir. Look around and all this disrespect going on, all this unruliness, and, and my goodness, it, it translates into politics. Amen. You don't see where a nation's going. Just look at your politician. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Just look at them. You'll find out which direction we're headed. Yes. Look at your leaders. Yes. Hey, man, I'll tell you a story about a man by the name of Saul. Yes. Man, God chose him to be king of Israel, didn't he? Yes, sir. God put his hand on him. said, he's a big guy. Look out there, Samuel. There he is. Anointing king. Yes. Man, he looked like a king. He stood a head higher than anybody else in Israel. Isn't that yes. true? Yes, sir. Hair back, no, he had wavy hair. I'm losing mine now. He used to have big head of hair. Some of you's a little further along than I am. Praise the Lord. Big old wavy head of hair. He stood up there. He looked like a king. He had a voice, deep voice, probably rolled, 
and demanded attention and demanded respect. Yes. When you talk about having brother back in them days, you disrespect the wrong authority, you have problems. Yes, sir. You lose your head. Yes. Anyway, he looked like a king. The anointing was upon him as being king, and he was doing everything right until one day. Yes, sir. He entertained the wrong voice. Yes, sir. And he was pushed by the wrong group of people. Yes, sir. And he knows the story. Yes, sir. I mean, Saul, he goes out there and he's winning this battle. Boy, and he just, and God spoke to him through the prophets. And now, when you get out there, don't you leave a one of them. Don't you bring nothing back. You kill their sheep, you kill their camels, you kill their asses, you kill everything they've got. Don't you bring nothing back. And every one of them, right down to the least little baby, get rid of them. Yes. Oh, he's all fired up. Man, we're going to get it done today. Well, he got out there and he seen some fat cows. He seen some pretty camels. Mm -hmm. He seen a way gag. And all them people looked out there and said, Man, we just carry this home with us. Come on, Saul. You know the Lord. It'd be okay. It'd be all right. Can't y'all hear? Oh, I'm kind of a dramatic preacher. I had an aunt one time that filled me bedtime stories I never wanted to hear stop. And I pray, Lord, give me an ability to tell stories. I hope I'm not boring you folks tonight. No, no. Amen. This is important because this guy, he would, he, he was the anointed of the Lord and he was fixing to blow it. Yes. Yeah. And he got to listen to the wrong voice. Yes. Yes. Remember, there's all kinds of spirits in the world. Yeah. Wrong voice. Yes. That voice told him, said, man, Boy, you, 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 be the, you be the top dog then. Think about all these other kingdoms out there. You get away gag and bring him back and, and sport him around in the cage a little while. Man, they, they really fear you. Wrong voice. Yeah. I don't care whether you fear me or not. That's beside the point. You better fear God. Yes, sir. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. Yes. So Saul was losing his wisdom. Yes, sir. Saul gets out there, we know the rest of the story. He comes on back, Samuel comes out and looks at him, and I can see an angry prophet. And I've met two or three prophets in my life. And I've been in them anointed services when the anointing comes in and they got angry. Makes them crawl on their bench, don't they? Yes. Makes you hide. You make sure you get your sin. You're going to be right. Yes, sir. When that anointing comes in. Amen. That prophet was angry. He looked at Saul and said, What have you done? Oh, I've done what the Lord said. And what's the bleeding of the sheep, yes. the blowing of the cattle I hear? Yes. And then he hit it. Yes. Well, the rest of the story is the prophet grabbed up the sword, hacked a gag to pieces, pulled him out of the cage, hacked him to pieces right in front of everybody. This is the Bible. This is his. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, we, we get a lot of a lot of things happening now in, in in different countries now. A lot of Christians are being being killed. Yes, they are. Syria. In different countries, yes. I know yes. men that's been there and they say it's hard that what the Christians are going through right now tonight. Yes, right. their little babies taken from them, their little limbs chopped off, and heads chopped off, and you just just because of the beast mentality. Right. Yes, it's the last days, folks. Yes, yes. that's right. So this thing had happened, and Saul was feeling good, but then when that prophet got a hold of him, he didn't feel so good. He said the anointing is rent from Saul. Yes. The anointing. The anointing is being taken from you to be king. Yes, sir. So Saul fell on his knees, so to speak. The scripture said he grabbed at the prophet's garment. He just tore in his hands. Turned and looked at his sister. Then says the kingdom of Israel rent from you. Yes, sir. So Israel was right out of king. Had a king, but didn't really have one. He had a man in an office. Yes. Kind of like what we got. Yes, sir. Right? Yes. Kind of like what we got. Yes, man. You just got somebody occupying an office. Yes. Right. Something to think about. It. You ever read the Bible? Yes, sir. Y'all ever read the Bible? Yes, sir. I'm going to read it. Yes. Not, not, you know, people say, oh, for God's love the world, he gave his own God's son. Whosoever believes in him should not period now, have everlasting life. And he'll throw it off to the kids. Well, I'm going to tell you, that scripture means more to me than that. Yes, sir. 
For God so loved the world. Yes. That was me. Yes. Yes, sir. That He gave. Yes. Man, don't you feel that? Don't you yes, feel God. the word that He gave His yes. only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in Him. Who? Jesus. Yes. I believe in Jesus yes. tonight. Yes. Amen. He went to that cross for me. Yes. Man, it brings that. It brings the word alive. Yes, a lot of you preachers don't want to bring it to life. Just like his president don't, don't want to admit and bring our laws to life like they should. Yes. Yes. Right. Amen. Kind of a coincidental thing, isn't it? Right. We're in the Bible. Yes, sir. We're there. Yes. We're, we, we've never gotten out of it. Right. Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away. Right. If you do, yes. something's yes. not. Praise God. Right. Amen. Amen. We see all this stuff going fast, and then Saul and all that happened. He was rent from being king, and all that came to an end. Israel was without a king, and all this stuff happened. And they were looking for a new king. God knew exactly what the king was. He was a little boy. Yes. Yes. He was standing over on the side of the hill, uh -huh. tending his father's sheep. Yes, amen. He knows a story. Yes. He's out there, and then one day his dad calls for him. Says, "Come on, I got some cheese and some bread. Don't you carry your brother?" They down there fighting battle with the Philistines. See, Israel was losing. Yes. When Saul did not do what God commanded him to do, Israel began to lose in the face of right. nations. Right. Yes, amen. No one feared them. Right. No one respected them. Right. There was always some kind of skirmish. It says Bible history. There's always some kind of skirmish coming up and, yes. and, and attacking the children of Israel and pushing them around. Yes. And, and it was due to one thing called disobedience. Yes, sir. Amen. Disobedience is a bad place to be. Yes, sir. I don't be disobedient. Amen. Anyway, there's this new kid. And it's the hope of Israel is what he was. Yes, sir. God knew where he was at. Told Samuel, load up your ass, put some stuff on him, get on over, bring some oil, you get over to Jesse. He's got a son on that you've talked to. I'm putting him in my way. Oh, yes. So he does. He said, Well, now, Saul finds out what I'm doing, he'll kill me. It's just tell him you're going to make sacrifice. It'll be all right. Yes. I'll handle him. Yes. So he gets on over there. There's that big first, the eldest son, Ben and Dab, I think that was his name. I forget all of their names. Three of them don't even mention. Next one came back. Third one named him. He came back. Three more came back. The anointing didn't move on Sand. The anointing didn't move. Yes. Kind of like where we at right now. That's a Jesus. It's a, you know, it was a hope. That's well, look, there's more folks in this thing than it's in the Church of God, or United Christian, or any other denomination. Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. And if you hear his voice, guess what? A stranger you won't follow. He said, I'll bring them to Zion. There'll be one fold and one shepherd. So these name tags really don't mean a whole lot to God. Let me believe it. So anyway, that, that prophet, he stands there. He says, have you got another son? Yes. He said, well, sure I do, Jesse did. I got another one. But he's just a kid. He's, he's out over here on the back 40, tending the sheep. Yes. Something hits at him. Yes. And I believe something's fixing to hit the church. Yes. 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 I'm going to tell you, if I were where Brother Matt, we stood on that property. Now, I ain't nobody. I'm going to just tell you right straight. I'm not an arrogant preacher. I'm just a local businessman. I work. I believe in, in tithing. I believe in the work of the Lord. I give. I support missions. Amen. The number one goal in my life is get the Word out. Yes, sir. Amen. And I'm nothing but a one little dot on God. If that's, if that's His people, see them little dots on that wall? You yes, see a spark with everyone. I ain't one of them. I'm just one of them little bumps right there. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you, when the anointing comes on any one of us, amen, you rise to the occasion. Amen. Hang on, speak to you and say, Lord, I want to rise to the occasion. Praise God. I felt the Holy Ghost just being sweet in the building. Amen. God's looking for someone that's willing to arise to the occasion. 
Amen. I thank God for a little apostolic woman sitting over in Kentucky that stood and held her head high and said, no, I'm not signing your marriage certificate. Amen. Somebody lift your hands and praise God whether you like it or not. Amen. Somebody's got to take a stand, folks. And then the anointing comes on, you take a stand. Yes, Praise God. I feel that same thing. Yes, I'm going to go with that little lot over there. Well, Brother Matt, y'all want to have that thing excavated and concrete put in. I mean, I begin to feel the Holy Ghost. Yes, I know sir. what the Holy Ghost is. Yes, Man, I felt the Holy Ghost. And I started crying. I don't do that much. I'm not a crying person. I used to be when I was a kid. But my crying baby stopped. Cry baby day stopped. But when that anointing gets a hold of you, it'll make giants weak. Yes. Yes. Amen. I went to walk over and broke, amen, seat or uh, asphalt, and the Spirit of the Lord came. I mean, came, touched me right there. And I heard a message I have yet to preach, amen, under the anointing in my ministry. And it's going to come forth because I believe who said it was the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost don't lie. Amen. Preachers lie. Yes. People lie. Yes. Amen. But the Holy Ghost is the spirit of yes. truth. Yes. That anointing came over. Hallelujah. And Brother Matt had shared it there for me. We got to pray and that made it come down, didn't it? Yes, yes. I mean the Holy Ghost. Yes. Praise God how God's going to do some things. I said, yes. I got thank him. I said, Lord, hit me. Yeah. Then the yeah. scripture hit me. Yes. He said, Son, the time will come, the doors will be open day and night. Oh, you believe that? That's the book of Isaiah. I mean, there's going to come a time. If you're still here, there's going to be such a need and a draw for the Word of God in people's life. Amen. You won't be able to shut the door. It'll be like a Krispy Kreme down there. They have tents out there waiting on them. They want a man of God or a woman of God to lay hands on them and pray for them and get them out of trouble. How many of you say, do it again, boy? What we're waiting on. They that wait upon the Lord. Amen. All my strength for you. Yes, sir. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I remember sitting with a little boy in them meetings. I remember one time a demon possessed guy got up. He took four men to hold him down. Boy, I remember I spent beside Sister Gibbs. Some of y'all may know some of the Perkins. Larry Perkins, he was there at that meeting. Sister Perkins, his mom. Yes. Some of the older folks. that son gone on to be with the Lord. I remember they was there that night. I was a little boy and I stand up sister person. I stand right next to her. Dad the audience. She looked over and said, Mikey, that's what she called me. Bleed the blood. That demon's coming out. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, we don't even hear that in church no more. Bleed the blood, Jesus. Do you? You know what we're talking about. Yeah, we hear it here. Amen. We don't want to say it as a whole. I'm not I'm getting on y'all, but y'all understand what I'm saying. Please. I'm not getting on you. If you believe I'm not getting on you. If you don't believe I got a problem. You got a problem. And it's hard to smile in church. In church, man, I'd raise holes. Sometimes we're afraid to go there. Oh, you don't get zapped today. Anyway, they got to hope that throw took for me and hold him down. Amen. After it's all over, the anointing done moved, a, a guy's whole countenance changed. Yes, sir. Yes. I mean, I've seen a few things. The yes. power of God moved. Then yes, one day, this little kid over there was keeping sheep. All of a sudden, he's, I mean, from nothing into the limelight. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Remember this. After the day he was anointed, when yes. that prophet poured oil on his head, you know what he did the next day? He went back and kept his father's sheep. Yes, sir. Yes, he sir. went right back to his job. Yes, he did. Amen. We've all got a place. Let me let you say, I've got a place in this great work of God. Yes. You stay in your place until that anointing hits. When it hits, do your thing, sit down. Yes. Go back to your place. Yes. That's how it works, folks. Yes, sir. And everybody's saying it. I'm one of them. I kind of say, you know, don't be too hard on myself. But ain't everybody a prophet. Ain't everybody an evangelist. We got to get it in our head. Amen. Well, I'll stay at that. But anyway, here this little guy is over there. And his father calls him, get you some cheese and bread. Get out there and take it to your brothers and take this one special one to the host, the captain of the host. 
I'm going to make him sure he understands that I want him to take care of my young ones. What it's all about? Father's love. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Daddy loves his kids. Yes. So, David, you go on down there. Yes. Y'all got time to listen to this. I don't even sell a clock. As long as we don't have one. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hang on, folks. <laughs> Get on down there. He did. He got down and he's standing there. And he's brought his bread. He brought his, you know, just kind of, you got to have to use your imagination in the scripture, folks. You don't have to fill in the spaces. He gets jumps off that carriage. He's unloading all that stuff. And they're all looking around. What's he doing? Ain't that son of Jesse yet? Yeah, Jesse's son. Hey, so and so, here's your brother up here. What's he doing? What's he doing here? What's that kid doing up here? I mean, it's read the story. It's what they did. It's ugly to him. Yes, What's that? Hey, I ain't got a purpose. I brought you something to eat. My goodness. He turned around and looked, heard somebody screaming hard down the valley. And this is a little pit squeak standing in front of a giant. He's a squealing and a hollering and a carrying on, telling y'all come on down here and fight you bunch of cowards. And David, he hears that and he catches his attention. Yes. It caught David's attention. Yes. And what's that guy doing now? What's he telling that stuff on? <coughs> hey, with the armies of Israel, what's wrong with you guys? Yes. God will take care of him. Let's get out of our fact. Yes. Brother gets mad at him. So you get on back to your sheep. Leave us alone. I said, wait a minute. There's a cause. There's a reason for us to be here. Then he wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about the whole house of Israel on the side of the mountain. He said, there's a reason we're here, and they're the reason. We're supposed to whoop them. That's what David was saying. Yes. Yes. David gets up there, they get mad. Get on back now. You just used the mischief of your heart. It's brought you down here. You just wanted to see the battle. Now, when that statement was made, you know, I said the scripture. Have you ever thought for a minute what that meant when he said that? You come to see the heat of the battle? Yeah. Well, I had a thought. You know what the heat of the battle then was? <laughs> <laughs> Let it hit you that big spirit weighs 22 pounds on the end. It'll knock about seven, eight of us down one leg. Yeah. Yeah. Is that not scripture? Yes, what battle? There's a bunch of cowards. Yes. Right? Yes, because no one was instilling courage into their hearts. Right. And that's what needs to be encouraged. Yes. Right. Well, I had a fellow one time tell me, I didn't go in business. I've been 35 years old. I had somebody tell me, you can't do it. Well, okay. Yeah. Twenty years later, we get. Yes. God's been good to me. Yes, He has. And well, old David, he's standing there. He said, "Wait a minute, I ain't going nowhere. There's a reason we're all here on the side of this hill." Yes. Hey, man, that host, that captain, he he didn't he he throw the bread down. He throw the cheese down. He said, "There's something about this boy. I got to get him to saw." Yes. When he got to saw and begin to rehearse what God had done in the past. Yes. Saul had enough sense left in that old weary kibasa of his to understand the anointings on that boy. Yes, sir. Right. Yes. That's what it says. Yes. But he's standing there, he's looking at David, and David said, I was out there, I was in the field, and there was a lion and a bear, and they came out to get my father's sheep. Yeah. Yes. Man, that don't make your hair stand up right there and get his father's sheep. Yes. He said, and I rose up and I pursued. Oh, yeah. Hey, Amen. Little old skinny, maybe 14, 15 year old boy, sandals on. I don't even know what he had on. Some kind of rag wrapped around him. You know how they dressed back in them days. And a little old stick. And there's a bear and a lion. And he's getting the best of both of them. Yes. That's an amazing thought to me. Yes. Now this isn't just a storybook featured in that. This is something, children, that actually happened. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. I remember Brother Alton Chapman, I mentioned him, Brother John's funeral. I'll never forget the last sermon I preached around Brother Alton was in Pine Grove before the tornado blew it down. He was pastor there. And I preached that sermon that night or that morning. And you know that lion and that bear heard a noise they had never heard. When they had that little lamb in their mouth, it was the footsteps of a kid chasing them. Yes. You think about that. How old are you, son? 
Yeah. Fifth time. Man, that little young man. He didn't want you. Put, you, put yourself in that place. I mean, all it takes is the anointing, folks. Yes, sir. Right. Yes. It's all it takes. Hey, I'm 55. My son has done came up to the middle and is pushing over to 2 o'clock. I got enough sense to know that. I ain't going to live forever, neither you. Right. Only in Jesus when we yes. do like Brother John. Either the Lord yes. comes and gets us, yes. Yes, sir. or we go to Him. Yes, sir. Yeah. One or two. Yes, it's on the way out. Yes, sir. But God's got His hand on you. Yes. Amen. And don't refuse the call of the Lord or that anointing that's upon your life. Because you may have something greater than a Billy Graham or Jack Cole. A. Allen could yes. be sitting in our midst tonight. A William Brown. Go down the list of men and women of God. Catherine Kuhlman. Any of you little, little girls in here. Name them off one by one. How the power of God moves. Yes. Somebody's going to fill their shoes sooner or later. Amen. Somebody lift your hands because your children are important. Now, they've gone from the homosexuals. Amen. That's what they're reaching for next is your children. You better plead the blood over your children because Satan's grabbing for them. Now he's cutting them up in the womb. Amen. Makes my blood boil. Pardon me if I get a little bit beside myself. Anybody that do that has no feeling. They're without conscience. Go read the book of Jude. Amen. Foreordained to this condemnation. It's there. They're there. Yes. It's in your Bible. Yes, it's in your New Testament. Yes. And nothing more than beasts and demons wrapped in right. human skin. Right. They'll never be saved. It's not in them. The love of God's not in them. He's right. never shared it with them, nor will He ever. Right. She bowed. Right. There David is. <laughs> yes. He's standing there looking at Saul. Amen. The only comes on. He starts telling that story. He chased that lion down. He chased that bird down. He said, and I took that lamb out of the mouth. Yes, sir. You thought, hey, he did that. He, he had to get a straddle up. Yes. Yeah. Use your imagination, folks. Yes, sir. Had to get a straddle up. Yes, sir. He got down on that lion, had that old lion's head. He twisted that thing, pulled ever so gently. He pulled that mouth open and got somehow got that little lamb out and it run off. And then he said, you mind, boy. <laughs> Bear the same way. Yeah. And he believes this is the truth. Yeah. I mean, then he broke some jaws. Yes. He took that rod. He probably jammed the rod down her throat. Yeah. Who knows? Amen. You know, I got some friends. No brother just said, he is a fine fellow. <laughs> and he, take, he tells me stories about in Africa and how the Messiah tried. You've heard the Messiah? Yes, sir. You know, that's how they prove they're a man. Yes. They have to go out in the, the bush with a stick uh -huh. and kill a lion. Yes. And them little skinny rascals do it. Yes, sir. <laughs> so if they can do it, amen, why can't the anointing come on the little skinny boy outside of Jerusalem over there and he'll kill a lion and a bear and just chomping it to bit to get to a giant? Yes, sir. Pray God, somebody lift your hands. Say, Use me, Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. He comes back. Gets over there. Saul wants to put his garb on him. He says, I ain't proved it. Sound like a tin can when he's walking off, throwing off that helmet and brass, that coat of mail, and the day weighed almost a hundred pounds. Uh, the one on uh, Goliath weighed 180 pounds, yes. according to history. Yes. That's a big, that's a woven mesh. Yes. Kept a spear or a dart or a, a dagger from standing. Mm -hmm. See, so they wore that stuff in the battle. Them strong men, folks. Yes, sir. You think we got warriors now? You go back to history, you find some men to men. Yes, sir. Them some tough dudes. Yes. Anyway, David, he throwed all that stuff off said, I ain't proved it. I don't want it. That kind of offended Saul. Later on, you'll find out he did. You read the rest of the story. Yes, sir. Anyway, Saul, he's standing there and says, okay, Lord, go with him. Go with him. Lord, go with him. He didn't really know. He just thought something was going to happen. Amen. David gets down there. He runs out. There them three brothers are. They look at him. Lord, he's back. David's back, David. David's back. What's he doing this time? He's with the captain of the Holy. Now what's he doing? <laughs> what's he doing? He's running down the hill. He's running. And before he got there, he'd done something very important. Yes. And never read the story. Uh -huh. He went by a brook. Uh -huh. And he had a little pouch. And he reached down in that brook 
and he grabbed up five smooth stones. Yes. You ever wonder why five? Yeah, my brother. I said, well, yeah, some of you know that. I sat one night trying to figure that out and find it, the Holy Ghost. Just, it, just like a light went on. Had apostles, prophets, and man, and pastors, and teachers. It's the fivefold ministry. Now I wonder if that's what that was a, a symbolic of, which one of them did he hit them with? Uh, <laughs> you wonder about that? Man, you do something to think about tonight when you wake up. He run on up there and said, There he is. He ain't got a sword. He got that stick he keeps cheap with. He ain't got to sling that pouch. What's he doing? He done throw his stick down. <coughs> now the giant screamed at him. My dog, you send out a kid. I'm going to feed you to the fowls of there. Well, what guess what? No. David said the same thing. But David prophesied it. Yes. Yeah. He didn't. The anointing was upon David. Yes. And he never yes. let up. Man, I hope you can close your eyes and you see that little skinny legged fella running down the hill and all of a sudden out of that pouch comes and I wish I had a sling here than that. I tried to do it with a bass guitar strap one night and hit myself in the head. <laughs> <laughs> he had that sling and he knew exactly what he was doing and when he let that thing go, the anointing was in it. Yes. 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 Talk about the shot heard around the world. Yes. But that was one, that big old ugly thing was standing all of a sudden that thing. Yes. Right before him. Yes, sir. Him eyes go crossed. He starts stuttering. <laughs> oh, he is going backwards and forth. Now, where's that little pit squeak that was doing his talking? That's it. Remember that guy? The mouthpiece? The little fella in front? Yes, sir. He's headed for the hills. And that big guy, he's a reeling and a rocking. And David, read the scripture. He never lets up. Right. He keeps running. Boy, I feel the anointing tonight. Amen. How many wants to keep running? Amen. I've got to keep going. I've got to keep pushing. I've got to keep fighting. Because if I do, I can get to the Goliath, and then he's mine. Yes. Praise God. He runs down that hill. Praise God. <coughs> and he jumped up on his back. Yeah. Remember, he fell on his face. Yes, sir. He's laying spread eagle, blood going everywhere. Amen. Rest of the Philistines said, Oh, well, we got problems, boy. <laughs> we got trouble. Yeah. That little old skinny guy standing there looking down at him. What I do next? He turns around and looks at his brothers. All of a sudden, they're jumping up and down. What about that? How about Holy Ghost meat right there on the side of the hill? They jumping up and down. <laughs> Amen. I used to jump up and down, still do sometimes. Praise God, I get chill bumps. I mean, it's chill bumps. Yeah. Amen. There's more to it, chill bumps. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. They can run the top of the bench sometimes. I've done that before. Amen. 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 Say, do it again, Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't see the point. I ain't getting enough in. I'm telling you so. I'd say, do it again, Lord. Yes. Do we lose this pride? Yes. And we lose our dignity in the anointing? Yes. God's going to move, folks. Yes, sir. Wait to see. It'll happen. Yeah. He run down there, jumped up there. He didn't have a sword. He looked down and said, I believe i got a sword now. The sword was longer than he was tall. Right. Read your Bible. Yeah. Yeah. He swung that thing. He had to grow to the sword. He swung that thing around yeah. the best he could. and yes. Blood started spurting again. Yes. That old head rolled off. He turned around and grinned at his brother. I'm putting this in my lane. He grabbed that old head and grinned at his brother. He probably winked at him. Look at him, boys. And, and you know what happened? Yeah. The power of the Lord came on the whole house of Israel. Yeah. Amen. There was a cry went up. Amen. They used to yell a lot back in them days. They went to screaming and hollering and talking about that Holy Ghost meeting again. They was running down that hill. Amen. And the Philistine, the Philistine said, We're in trouble, boy. Believe I leave. Amen. They all turned around, took tail, left everything they had. And go read the Bible. They chased them all the way back back to their homes and took the furniture out of the house. Yeah. Amen. That's something. Yes, sir. I'm amazed. So what's that got to do with this? What, what's that got to do with this? The church is looking, the anointing is looking for a champion. Yes, Will you be that champion? Yes, Will you be that David at work? 
Will you be that David in your house, at your home, in your family? Will you be that strong man of the house? Somebody is not hearing me hearing that. This is a word of prophecy. Will you be that strong man of your house? Amen. It's needed. Amen. That's what it's 8 to 10 of tonight. Your family's needed. Being a strong man in the house. Yes, sir. Somebody to hold on to the promises of God, not yes. let them go. Yes. Amen. I've been faced with some things in the past two or three years now that's concerned people close to me. And I'm really having to fight. Amen. How's having to fight a battle just late? Amen. We're all in this thing together. Amen. The devil don't just attack one. He, he, he tries to get the whole group if he can. But he'll get you singled out if he can. So David came back with the head, went up there in the hall with, with Saul, throwed that head down, got everything Saul promised. Yes. Israel returned to its status among the nations. The power of God returned in, in, to an extent, not fully yet, because David was not king yet. That's another story further down the road. But the anointing came back for a season for a span of time until Saul was gone. When Saul was gone and David taken over, then you can tell the story of David's life. Amen. How many love the Lord here today? Amen. God's speaking to us here today. So it's not over. The fat lady ain't sung yet. Excuse me. That's just an expression. So God got his time today. And a lot of it's left up to us. Y'all realize that? Yes, sir. Are we going to get close to it? Are we going to seek the face of the Lord? Are we going to pray? Right. Amen. Let's all stand. It's true. Everything I've witnessed is child, everything that I've seen God do, it's still in it's still in God. God doesn't change. God forever the same.
prayer for tonight I think you were in the same situation I was I was on that in that place and I could see David I could see his brothers I could hear them and I could see David in a fearless character walking out there with his trust in the Lord. The same one that wrote that scripture that says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear the evil. For you. He was protected by God himself. And he wasn't afraid of what the, the giant, the bear, the lion could do. I saw the as he preached that I could see that lion and I could see him jump straight with that lion and bear. I could see that. Praise God. And that's what God's going to do with you. He's going to use you. And I'm going to reiterate, not trying to take anything away from what he said, but just to tell you, God's looking for you. You, you say, well, I can't do that. I'm not a David. It's because you don't want to be. You can be if you want to be. And God will raise you up. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I like what it said about a skinny leg little boy. that made me think of me. <laughs> Skinny legs, skinny the rest of my body, but it's handsome. I was David. <laughs> thank you, brother Chapman. I appreciate that so much. And thank you, Sherry, for being with us tonight. And I praise God for what the Lord spoke through you was it ministered. And you painted a word picture. That's that is a gift of God to be able to cause the people to see the scripture, the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God for victory in Jesus. Amen. I want to say one verse of that. I heard an old, give me the right key, old story. I'm the